Alzheimer's disease is one, possibly the most common form of dementia. Uh, we're familiar with the symptoms of memory loss, but there's also cognitive decline. Um, and that extends even to inability to perform motor commands and finally results in so much neurodegeneration that death follows. It's mostly neurons in the hippocampus and basal forebrain that degenerate and in the diagram at the bottom where you see the semi-transparent brain the hippocampus is the blue structure that looks like a, the letter C and the basal forebrain is just under the right hand side of the hook. No one knows quite what causes it or how the pathology results in cell death but there are a number of theories but as is quite often the case in pharmacology the strategy is not to actually cure the disease, we don't know how to do that, but rather to reduce its symptoms in the case of Alzheimer's disease only temporarily. We've already said that most of the neuronal loss is in the hippocampus and basal forebrain, but in addition to that, it seems to be largely cholinergic neurons which are getting lost in Alzheimer's disease. In the diagram on the left, you can see slices in A and B uh, and C and D of human postmortem brains stained with choline acetyltransferase, which marks cholinergic neurons and you can see in the top two which are a healthy patient there are lots of cholinergic neurons. One of the main uh, types of treatment for Alzheimer's disease are a class of drugs called acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. As you can see in the diagram on the right if you look at ACHE you'll see that the role of acetylcholinesterase is to catalyze the degradation of acetylcholine into choline and acetate. So the strategy for ACE inhibitors is to reduce the action of acetylcholinesterase and that results in an increased concentration of acetylcholine in the synapse. And the belief is that this temporarily compensates for the loss of cholinergic signaling in the disease. A strategy for treating Alzheimer's disease uh, also consists of targeting glutamatergic signaling. And the reason for that is that glutamate, which is the major inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain, activates NMDA receptors, that's N-methyl-D aspartate receptors, and these are unusual in that they're permeable to calcium. So the idea is that um, what happens is glutamate causes, or excess, excess glutamate signaling causes a, a build-up of intracellular calcium ions, and that does a lot of things. First, one of the things it does is to stress the endoplasmic reticulum, it also initiates a number of intracellular signaling pathways, all of which converge on apoptosis and necrosis, two forms of cell death. What's not shown in this diagram, which is important, is the accumulation of nitric oxide, which destabilizes the membrane. Alzheimer's disease is one of several diseases which are characterised by the accumulation of aggregated proteins. In the case of Alzheimer's disease, there are two types of accumulated protein which mark the pathology of the disease. One type is extracellular, and these consist of plaques of amyloid beta protein. Amyloid beta protein, or A-beta, is is, is, is made in the cells by cleavage of amyloid precursor protein or APPP. APP can be cut by secretases in many locations and it appears that individuals with a familial that is an inherited form of Alzheimer's disease tend to prefer cutting the APP such that we get an increase of a, of a particular form of A-beta, 
which it which aggregates very strongly and causes these plaques. No one quite knows what a beta is doing in health, but the problem is the the form caused which causes Alzheimer's aggressively aggregates and forms these plaques outside the cells. The intracellular protein which accumulates it consists of tau protein. Tau protein is what microtubules are made of. In this case the we get the formation of intracellular tangles or accumulations called tangles of hyperphosphorylated tau protein. These two pathologies, extracellular A-beta plaques and intracellular tangles, are the hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease. Many neurodegenerative diseases which involve aggregation of proteins are, seem to be due partly to an inability to deal with misfolded proteins. Normally, once a protein is transcribed from the mRNA and enters the endoplasmic reticulum, it's carefully folded to create its tertiary structure. Quite often that goes wrong. And what happens when, as a result of that is you get misfolded proteins. And these misfolded proteins are normally handled by the cell cell's machinery. So for example, it can be simply unfolded again and refolded using molecular chaperones or it can be simply disposed of by a kind of cellular garbage collection system. However in some cases it, what happens is that instead of being disposed of these misfolded proteins form oligomers and then these oligomers form insoluble aggregates and this is what's causing the problem in Alzheimer's disease. So both the tau tangles and the A-beta plaques are examples of insoluble aggregates. And by some unknown mechanism, they result in cell death. These are three of the most commonly prescribed anticholinesterases, donepazil, galantamine and rivastigmine. The only widely prescribed drug acting on glutamate signalling is memantine, which is an antagonist of the NMDA receptor. Recall that NMDA receptors are permeable to calcium and that it's believed that one of the mechanisms of cell death involves, certainly in stroke, possibly in other neurodegenerative conditions as well, involves glutamate-mediated excitotoxicity, where glutamate causes NMDA receptors to open too much, so you get an excess influx of calcium, and that leads to cell death. So very simply, memantine is an antagonist of NMDA receptors and blocks the glutamate action.